Good afternoon para si Tology class. Okay, let us continue our lesson with your liver flukes. <clears throat> now, let us begin with your Clonorchis sinensis and your Opistorchis species. Now, with regard to this topic, I will discuss these trematodes all at once since they all belong naman to the same family, which is your Opistorchidae. And aside from this one, they have quite similarities in terms of their morphology, their life cycle, and even their mode of transmission, which is through ingestion of freshwater fish. Now, let us start with their life cycle. Now, the egg, the egg of these trematodes are fully matured when they are being released by the adult form. However, class, take note um, that the miracidium will only hatch Okay, will only hatch after it has been ingested by the first intermediate host. Lagi, uh, wag niyong kakalimutan class, it will only hatch after ingestion of the first intermediate host. Okay, so in, unahin natin yung mga first intermediate snail ng mga ng ating clonorchis sinensis. Okay, for clonorchis sinensis, their first snail intermediate host are the Genus Parafosarolus. We also have your Bulimus. Bulimus nails. Your Semisulcospira. Tiara and Melanoides. Okay, so these are the first snail intermediate hosts belonging to your Clonorchis sinensis. Okay, now aside from this one, the first snail intermediate host naman of your Opistorchis felineus and your viverini requires the snails belonging to the genus Bithynia. Okay? So, continue natin. Now, this miracidium, upon entry now to the snail host, so, kunwari, yan, nakapasok na siya sa first intermediate host natin, this miracidium will now be transformed into sporosis. They will transform into sporosis which subsequently now produce two radial stages. Now, each radia will now in turn, okay, in turn will produce now your cercaria. It will now produce your cercaria. <clears throat> and then, this cercaria will then be released into the water. Now, yung cercaria natin, once na lumabas na yan sa tubig, okay, it will now seek its second intermediate host. Now, this time, it is your, your, the second intermediate host of your clonorchis and your opistorchis is a freshwater fish. Okay? Now, once na nasa loob na yan, once inside the second intermediate host, it will undergo now encystation. Encystation, and then later on, it will now transform into metacercaria. Now, this metacercaria, this will now be our infective stage. Infective stage for the definitive host. Now, once inside the definitive host, for example, nakalabas na ulit siya sa ating snail host, magahanap na yan ng kanyang definitive host. Now, once uh, upon entering now the, the definitive host, once nasa loob na siya, saan na yan pupunta class? Your metacercaria will undergo existation, specifically in the duodenum. And then this... Um, Tawag dito, this will now be transformed into juvenile fluke. Okay, now this young fluke natin, yung young fluke natin, it will migrate to the ampu ampulla of Vater. Ampulla of Vater, and then from there, from the ampulla of Vater, it will migrate into the common bile duct. Into the bile duct, and then finally into the distal biliary capillaries distal biliary capillaries and then from there dito doon na magko-continue yung development ng ating fluke wherein it will develop into mature adult worm now this adult fluke will attach itself to the mucosa of the bile duct okay so kung titingnan natin class kung babasahin natin mabuti the usual habitat of these parasites are the bile duct. <clears throat> they will attach themselves to the mucosa of the bile duct by using their suckers. Okay? However, class, take note that some flukes can also be found in the pancreatic duct and the gallbladder. 
But again, their usual habitat is the bile duct. Pero yung iba, pwede rin makita sa pancreatic duct and the gallbladder. Now, let us talk about the morphology of these uh, parasites. Now, take note class that the adult form of these trematodes are said to be leaf-like in shape. Leaf-like in shape with transparent tegumen. <clears throat> And then, your clonorchisinensis, uh, clonorchisinensis adult is about 10 to 25 millimeter long, okay? While your opistorchis naman class, your opistorchis adults are very, uh, are slightly, rather, are slightly uh, shorter as compared to your clonorchis, measuring about 8 to 12 millimeter long. Now, the main similarities between your clonorchis and your opistorchis is the location of their Vitellaria, which is which which are found now in the middle third of the body at the level of the uterus. Whereas the main difference naman ng dalawa are are based now are based in the arrangement of their arrangement and morphology of the testes. Okay? Yung clonorchis sinensis natin, they have two large highly branched highly branched testes arranged in tandem in the posterior half of their body. Whereas your opistorchis naman, they have a low bait, low bait testes, which are arranged obliquely. Now, the eggs of these parasites, magkakamukha lang yung kanilang ova, kaya mahirap ma-distinguish. Now, what is the appearance of their ova? The eggs of these parasites are said to be thick, yellowish, uh, yellowish brown in color, with a distinct convex operculum and a small protuberance at the abopercular portion resembling now resembling now the appearance of an old fashion old fashion electric bulb appearance of their ova 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 <laughs> now take note class that the ova of these three parasites are very difficult to differentiate okay so ano magiging basis natin class pwede siguro yung epidemiology and then the patient's history. Now, infections caused by your clon clonorchis sinensis, we, uh, we call it clonorchiasis. Now, for opistorchis naman, infections caused by your opistorchis, we call it opistorchiasis. Now, unahin lang natin yung infections caused by your clonorchis sinensis. In your clonorchi uh, clonorchiasis, during the acute stage of the disease, the signs and symptoms such as chills and high-grade fever may present insidiously. And now, and then during naman, ju uh, during the chronic stage naman, clinical presentations may present cirrhosis and portal hypertension. Again, during the acute stage of the infection, pwede si patient magmanifest lang ng high-grade fever together with uh, chills. Now, for chronic stage of clonorchiasis, pwedeng mag-manifest si patient ng portal hypertension and cirrhosis. Now, in severe cases of clonorchiasis, complication may occur including gallstones, cholangitis, cholecystitis, hepatitis, and even pancreatitis. However, class, carcinoma of the liver, liver cancer, and adenocarcinoma of the gallbladder have been associated with clonorchiasis. So, mas common itong dalawang ito when it comes to um, associated with clonorchiasis infection. And then, we have your opistorchiasis, your opistorchiasis infections. Now, the infections associated with this parasite usually manifest hepatobiliary disease. It is usually associated with hepatobiliary disease. Also, chronic opistorchiasis ca uh, can lead to the formation of progressive autonomic imbalance syndrome and even sympathetic hypertonicity, provoking now metabolic disturbances of the myocardium. Now, to sum it up, the most important aspect of infection with this flux is its ability to initiate cancer. Always magkukos yan class ng liver cancer and cholangiocarcinoma. Now, for the laboratory diagnosis for your um, clonorchiasis and opistorchiasis, diagnosis can be made by detection of the parasite egg in the stool. 
However, class, sabi natin kanina, it is very to dis uh, dif difficult to distinguish between Clonorchis egg and Opistorchis ova. Okay? Actually, kasali nga rin si Heterophyes egg. Yan tatlong yan, magkakamukha lang sila ng ova. Now, however, when these ova are being stained with potassium permanganate, the ova of Opistorchis viverini may show a distinct melon-like ridges on the surface of their egg. Tapos, kung ayaw mo naman gumamit ng direct fecal smear examination, serologic tests are already available. <clears throat> Just like your ELISA, meron na tayong ELISA, enzyme immunoassay, and even PCR. Now, we have this what we call glycolytic enzyme possessed by your Clonorchis sinensis. This enzyme what we call phosphoglycerate kinase. We can actually use this one as immunity agent in the serodiagnosis of, of your clonorchis sinensis. Now, for the treatment, for the treatment of choice of your clonorchiasis and your opistorchis, always prosequantel pa rin class. Always our treatment of choice for treating trematode infections. Now, for the prevention and control, of course, avoid ingest, uh, ingesting raw or undercooked freshwater fish. And then next, we have your fasciola species, your fasciola hepatica, and your fasciola gigantica. Now, with this uh, trematodes class, again, I will, um, tawag dito, I will discuss these two all at once because they belong to the same family also, your fasciolidae. Then aside from this one, they also share similarities in terms of their life cycle and mode of transmission. The difference now is their occurrence and their epidemiology and slightly sa morphology may, may pagkakaiba silang dalawa. Okay, so in terms of life cycle, I will discuss it all at once. Okay, so let us begin first with their life cycle. The maturation of eggs of fasciola species usually takes between uh, within 9 to 15 days. Okay, so with that said, ang ova ng ating fasciola, it is um, immature when laid. And then, the maturation takes place within 9 to 15 days until it forms a viable miracidium. Now, this uh, miracidium, once na mag-hatch yan, it will then escape through the operculum to seek out and infect its first snail intermediate host. <coughs> to seek out for its first intermediate host. Okay? Now, in the case of... Um, Uh, tawag dito. I think pareho sila ng first snail intermediate host, your fasciola hepatica and your gigantica. Okay, so for the first snail intermediate host, they belong to the family Limnea. Limnea, um, specifically here in the Philippines, we have the most common snail host, your Limnea philippinensis and your Limnea auricularia rubiginosa. Okay. Now, once inside the first intermediate host, which is your limnea, the miracidium will now develop into sporosis. Okay, magka-transform yan into sporosis. Then later on, um, this sporosis will be followed by two generations of radii, which will subsequently produce the, what? The cercaria. Okay, so sporosis, radii, and then into cercaria. Now, this cercaria will then escape the snail host the snail host, and then it will swim freely in the water, especially during the night time. Take note class, it will swim freely in the water during the night time. Okay, so lalabas yan sa snail host natin, seeking now its second intermediate host, which is now your fresh uh, or rather your aquatic plants. Okay, now this uh, cercaria... Ang gagawin niya, mag attach siya or mag penetrate siya sa ating second intermediate midget host which is your aquatic plants belonging now to the genus Ipomea obscura or sa mas kilala, uh, mas kilala natin na kangkong. Okay? Aside from Ipo, Ipomea obscura, we have your Nasturtium officinale. Nasturtium officin, of, eh, officinale, officinale or sa mas kilalang tawag na watercress. Now, this cercaria will undergo encystation dito sa ating aquatic plants until it will uh, develop into metacercaria. 
your metasarcaria now will now serve as the infective stage for the definitive host. Now, pag nakapag-develop na yan into metasarcaria, again, lalabas siya sa kanyang second intermediate host, seeking now for its, <coughs> ay hindi, sorry, sorry class, medyo nahilo ako, kay hindi siya lalabas, this metasarcaria will undergo and si station, tapos kapag na-ingest yan ng ating definitive host, your aquatic plants, this metasarcaria will undergo existation in the duodenum, liberating now the juvenile fluke. Okay? Now, once na makalabas yan, anong, saan na siya pupunta class, it will penetrate the intestinal wall, and then later on, it will migrate to the liver. It will migrate to the liver. And then finally, entering now the bile ducts. Now, from there, yung ating juvenile fluke, pag once na ma-reach niya na yung bile ducts, it will now undergo uh, maturation until it becomes fully developed into adult fluke. Now, take note class that this adult fluke will live in the biliary ducts of the liver for up to 9 to 13 years. For up to 9 to 13 years. Now, let us talk about the morphology of these trematodes. Okay, unahin lang natin si fasciola hepatica. Your fasciola hepatica, also known as your sheep liver fluke, it has a large, broad, and flat body measuring about 20 to 50 mm in length and 6 to 12 mm in width. Now, it has a distinguishing feature which is the cephalic cone. Cephalic cone is like a shoulder-like structure. Now, this cephalic cone which has a marked widening at the base of the cone. Now, the testes, the testes naman of the fasciola hepatica are highly branched. They are highly branched, occupying now the second and third quarters of the body. Whereas the ovary naman, it is said to be dendritic and situated in front of the anterior testes. And then, for the uterus of the fasciola hepatica, it is, it is said to be relatively short and coiled. Now, how about the ova? The ova of your fasciola hepatica is uh, quite large and ovoidal in shape. Operculated din yung mga yan. And yellow, yellow, um, yellowish or yellow-brownish in color. Measuring about 140 to 180 micrometer by 80 to 100. Now, fasciola gigantica on the other hand, also known as your giant liver fluke, Okay, compared to fasciola hepatica, your fasciola gigantica adult worm is quite longer, mas mahahaba. And then, their cephalic cone is said to be less developed com as compared to your fasciola hepatica, mas prominent. Kung baga, mas prominent yung kanilang, or rather, mas defined yung kanilang cephalic cone. But in your fasciola gigantica, their cephalic cone are said to be less developed. And then, the branches, the branches of the ovary are said to be longer also and more numerous and then <clears throat> the ovary the ovary i sorry the ova resembles the egg of fasciola hepatica so mahirap na naman silang i-distinguish however the difference would be the size okay your fasciola gigantica eggs are relatively bigger okay they are relatively bigger as compared to fasciola hepatica now, there are actually two clinical stages recognized in human fasciolysis. One, we have the acute stage or yung, mas, yung tinatawag natin invasive phase. And then the other one, your chronic stage or what we call the latent phase. Now, an acute stage which coincides with the larval migration in the hepatic tissue, while as your chronic stage naman, it coincides with the persistence of the adult worm in the biliary ducts. Now, the invasive phase can sometimes be asymptomatic, but patients have been known experiencing fever and abdominal pain. Now, a sudden onset of high fever, hepatomegaly, and a marked eosinophilia, okay, these three sim symptoms is a triad of diagnostic significance of fasciolysis. Okay, again, high fever, hep hepatomegaly, and mark eosinophilia is a, is a triad, a triad of diagnostic significance of fasciolysis. Now, the chronic phase is said to be asymptomatic, although the adult worm causes obstruction and stimulates inflammation of the biliary ducts. 
Now, in some cases, class, this phase, your chronic stage, can only be diagnosed during surgery. Okay? Again, this phase is only diagnosed during a surgery. Now, other complications of human fasciolysis include uh, hemobilia and biliary cirrhosis. Now, for the laboratory diagnosis of human fasciolysis, okay, uh, in majority cases class, diagnosis of this infection can be really dif uh, can be really difficult, okay? Kasi because of overlapping symptoms or no symptoms at all, di ba? Sabi ko kanina, yung iba, <coughs> yung ibang patient natin, they may be asymptomatic, yung iba naman, pa iba iba yung symptoms. Now, direct examination of eggs pa rin, okay? Direct fecal examination of eggs. Okay. In the stool is also nearly impossible due to the intermit uh, intermittent passing out of the eggs in the stool. Okay. However, class, okay, oh, ito, balikan natin. Yung direct uh, fecal examination of eggs is also nearly impossible. Kasi bakit, class, saan ba yung usual habitat ng ating parasite? Diba sa liver? Okay. So, bihira. Bihira yan mapass out sa feces. However, pwede natin maging solution is the... Uh, tawag dito, may mga serological test naman na tayo. Okay? Now, however, class, pwede siguro makakita tayo ng egg uh, present in the stool after ingestion of raw liver from infected animals. Okay? Take note that the presence of, uh, presence of egg in the stool sample can only be possible after ingestion of raw liver from infected animals. Okay. Now, to sum it up, the laboratory diagnosis, the definitive diagnosis of fasciolysis, only depends upon the patient's history and through surgery only. Okay, now, so for the treatment of choice, again, praziquantel pa din. And then, for the prevention and control, avoidance of eating of raw or improperly cooked water, plant, vegetables.